Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Firstly, I wanna say that I hope everyone's doing well uh, with the coronavirus and the current situation that we have going on globally right now. Um, if you were wondering, my family and I are doing quite well. Uh, we're weathering it as best we can. Um, so I hope that everybody out there is staying safe and staying appropriately socially distant. Anyway, um, now that I have some extra time on my hands, I've been trying to work on a couple of things around the shop, such as shop organization, which is a big problem for me. It's a real struggle in here. Um, getting things put away, you know, establishing places to put things so that when it's time to put things away, things have a place, right? So one of the things that I'm working on right now for the purposes of this video is I'm working on storing my chucks right here. So um, one of the things uh, as you, if you're new to wood turning, then uh, you may look at this and think it's a little upset, a little excessive, it may be. But the one thing is that everybody, all wood turners know is the only thing better than one chuck is several chucks. So at some point, you're gonna probably end up with, with more than one chuck and you're gonna find yourself in a position where you need to find some way to store them, all right? There's all kinds of things out there. I tried finding uh, threaded rods and things to make some kind of mechanism to hold them on the wall, uh, but I find that it's very expensive, right? So I wanted to come up with something really inexpensive that was fairly neat and tidy looking and it really does the job using materials that I already have. Okay, and I think that this works really well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera so that I can get you in, get you a tighter view on this, and then we're going to talk about some of the features, and we're going to talk about what I'm going to be doing to improve this uh, today. I've used this rack for a couple of years so far, and I'm really happy with it. It's a very simple design, but it works really well, and I made it using scraps. So basically the construction goes like this. I take some two by material, I drill a hole in the front, and then I cut it in half on the bandsaw, which gives me two halves. And then when I turn the two pieces around like so, that gives me two halves with the angle, with the dowel angled up, much like that, okay? And you can arrange those. Once you make that, you can arrange it on the board however you see fit. You can arrange it so that you have your chucks on here. You could even incorporate uh, holders to hold your live centers and things like that, depending on the size of the board. This is totally configurable based upon your needs. Like I said, this project can be completed with standard 2 by lumber. I think I'm using a 2 by 6 uh, for the material that I'm going to be cutting the parts out of. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to have to cut your stock down to uh, the width that you need it you need it to be. I found that four and a half inches square is about right. So here I'm ripping the two by six down to a four and a half inch width. Now that it's four and a half inches wide, uh, we want to have these, well, I found that four and a half inches square is really good. So we're going to cut these down to four and a half inch lengths as well. We're going to do that over at the miter saw. I'm using a stop block here to uh, set up a, a repetitive cutting um, station at my miter saw to get all even, make sure that all the pieces are even. Now that I have all of my pieces cut into squares, now it's really important that you find uh, relative center. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but the closer the better because it's gonna make for a more even arrangement of the dowel um, in, the, in each piece. And the fact that you're gonna cut these blocks in half, uh, you definitely wanna be at least close to center. So they'll be in the same place because you're gonna flip some of them over.
So now that you have all your centers marked, you can take it over to the drill press. Now here I'm using the Nova Voyager DVR drill press. It has a really cool feature where I can extend the quill down and I can lock it in the down position with this handy lever on the front. And then that will hold the piece in place while I use, uh, use that placement to bring the fence up and get my distance exactly where I want it. And once that's all set up, you just plunge a hole all the way through in all four blocks. Now that we have all the, have a hole in all four of the blocks, we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half. I'm gonna do this on the bandsaw. Um, I just find that this is the easiest place. So I don't do anything, you know, crazy fancy here. I just start to tilt the table and move the block, move the fence and the block around until I get it relatively corner to corner. I think I ended up at about 70, it was something like 73 and a half degrees or something to that effect but I mean again it's not real important um, and that dimension would change based on the size of the squares that you started with anyway. Here I'm using the micro jig gripper push block. It's really handy um, as holding the block holding the workpiece and this kind of operation can get a little sketch but this helped out and I was able to make these cuts uh, very easily and safely. So now I need to cut my dowels. I believe I cut those about four, I think those were uh, just over, just under four inches. Um, and I'm also using this block here uh, with that short piece because I don't want to hold it with my hand. Um, another thing is uh, doing an operation like this, it's best to leave, best to wait until the blade comes to a stop before you pick it up so that the teeth don't pick up your work piece as it goes back up as you can see happened to me. So now we're on to the exciting part, making this thing work. So as you can see, I cut this block in half and I separate them and rotate one um, around and then I'm able to get uh, two blocks that have the hole at the right angle uh, facing up to make sure that the chucks don't fall off of there. And then I just take a dead blow hammer and drive it down in there. I had entertained the idea of mimicking the angle on the back side so that it would mount flat mount flush but I find that there's enough of the dowel down into the hole that it's really not necessary. Now once you get this get this far as you can see you can uh, you can put the chucks on uh, pretty much any way you like. Um, you can go ahead and um, configure these blocks on a substrate such as a piece of plywood or or uh, or piece of solid wood if you so inclined. Uh, I hang mine on the wall with a French cleat. You could easily um, attach this directly to the wall or any other method that you have to hang it up. I'd like to take this time now to thank you for joining me in my shop as well as watching this video. If you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss any content that I release in the future. In the description box below, I've included a link to my Amazon storefront where you can find links to products that I use in this video as well as in other projects that I do in my workshop. Using those links don't cost you anything extra, but they do go a long way to help us continue doing what we do here. Here's a couple of shots of the chuck rack hanging on the wall in its final configuration. I used a few, I used most of the existing hangers that were on this board and some of them I had to cut down to modify and get them to fit in the new configuration. 
Again, thanks. And I'd like to encourage you to get out in your shop, have some fun, make a mess, dread not, and make something. Peace.